Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Anime on Draft, episode seven this week. Uh, I'm Alec, you're one of your hosts, and this week, or this week and next week, I will be hosting. So I'm joined here today with uh, Rolando. Hi. And Drew. What's good, everybody? So today we're going to be going in our, in our, uh, what, what do we call the first segment again? Weekly pairing. <laughs> <laughs> weekly parent, thank you. In our weekly parent today, we're going to be reviewing the Coronado Brewing Company uh, Orange Avenue Wit California Wit Beer. So, hmm. Uh, have you guys poured yours out already, both of you? Yes. Indeed, um, I have. I know, uh, Rolando, you've got the bottle in front of you. So, would you like to give us a quick read on that description on the back there? Sure. Okay, so it's got a little subtitle, A Little Bit of Belgium in SoCal. So, our coastal take on a traditional wit beer is infused with orange zest, coriander, and orange blossom honey. This light-bodied beer has a sunny citrus zing with a hint of earthy spice and pays homage to Coronado's Main Street brew pub home. Take this bright brew for a spin. So refreshing, it'll keep you coming back for more. 5.2% alcohol by volume. <laughs> I like that little, a little bit of Belgium in SoCal. It's kind of cool. Um, so you picked you pick this beer uh, this week, Rolando. What, what kind of drew you to this one? Was it the brewing or, you know, what, what was it? Um, much like uh, every beer I pick, it uh, just, I just saw it and I was like, this looks interesting. This looks good. Mm -hmm. All right, fair enough. So uh, I've got mine here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's sip these and give our first impressions. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I've uh, yeah. I've had this one before, and I've actually oh, cheater. Uh, cheater. <laughs> I've had it, and I've uh, I've been to the brewery or brew pub or whatever on uh, Coronado, and it's uh, it's a kind of cool place. Their food is is average, but the their beers are are pretty good for the most part. Um, but like I said, I've had this one before, but, uh, I really like it. It's, it's like, it says it's light and kind of refreshing, definitely, mm -hmm. uh, a Belgian, uh, wit style for sure. Um, and the first thing I get really when I taste it is a lot of wheat, um, as opposed to, I, I think they're going more for citrus, but I definitely taste a lot of wheat right up, right up front. Ooh, yeah, that's a it's, lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a good, uh, it's like a nice, the color is nice too. It's like a honey yellowish color kind of, mm -hmm. or straw yellow is what you called it last time, right? Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of a Hefeweizen. It's also yeah. Yeah. Cloud, cloudy uh, like mm -hmm. a Hefeweizen would be. Mine's pretty carbonated. It's not mm -hmm. super carbonated, but I can see bubbles coming up from the bottom pretty heavily. Yeah, mine's, and then, mine's going pretty good as well. Light, real light head. Not really. Any I've got this in the, in that wheat beer glass. And um, I can see the but like the lines of bubbles just like crawling up the side of the glass. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's kind of a cool. I've got the Widmer Hefeweizen glass, and uh, so in the bottom quarter of the glass, you can see the bubbles, and then they kind of disappear into the cloudiness, and it's got a really neat effect. Um, so, but yeah, the the flavor, the first flavor I get is definitely wheat as well with you guys, but I get a lot of honey. Do you guys get a lot of? I get a lot of honey flavor in the aftertaste. I get the honey. Mm -hmm. I get honey and I get spices, but for something being named orange, I get almost no citrus. <laughs> it's kind of there. It's kind of like <clears throat> it's kind of there in the middle in between the wheat and the honey for me. And then it just disappears real fast. But yeah, there's there's a little um, I definitely taste the spices, though. It, it, it reminds me of uh, kind of I wonder the Allagash white a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I, I can agree with that. I wonder if it would if we garnished it with an orange or something, if that would bring out the more citrus flavors to it. But um yeah, yeah. like I said, I get I definitely get the spices. The coriander is really up front. And we've had a couple of beers that have coriander and it must be mm -hmm. like a, a popular uh, thing to brew beer with. I think so. coriander, like, especially in this on, type on Belgian yeah. style. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, for yeah. sure. Um but, but yeah, not a not a not a whole ton of citrus. Um Mm -mm. Not but for a still, beer named Orange Avenue. Well, ex I guess exactly. it could just be, is the street they're on Orange Avenue? Yeah, but they're they're saying, you know, um, with honey and spices. Right. And, it's um, also uh, orange-infused honey. Yeah. Oh, so. okay. mm -hmm. oh so, sorry, yeah, orange for, blossom honey. The amount of orange they're talking about, it's not really that much orange. 
But it um, is I'm definitely sure if, true to what they said, refreshing and light. So It is refreshing and light. I'm not sure what exactly is in orange blossom honey, but it could just actually be the floral element of like an orange blossom. Mm, like for the smell or, or whatever? Yeah. I think I think when they say that, I think they mean it's like bees that primarily pollinate. Pollinate orange from trees. orange blossoms. Okay. Yeah, mm. yeah. Interesting. I did not know that. The more you know, guys, the more you know. So... <laughs> We've kind of gone through our impressions, uh, Drew. What what would you give this as a as a rating here? Um, I've had it before, like I said, um, and I, I do like the Coronado um, Brewing. Um, so if you guys can get your hands on any of their beers, they're generally very affordable and pretty good. Um, I like Hefeweizens, and this again, it kind of reminds me of that. Um, and very drinkable, like we've been saying, um, super, uh, refreshing, even though we don't have a ton of the citrus or anything like that. Uh, but overall I'd probably give it like a 3.75. It's uh good, refreshing, easy to drink beer. That's uh nice on a hot day. So thanks for your input, Drew. Uh, Rolando, what do you think about this beer? Um, it's pretty good. I, uh, I get a lot of the honey in the aftertaste. Um, it's very light and refreshing. As a, uh, as you all have mentioned, um, we keep saying, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty you know standard fare for like a wheat beer. Um, I would probably give it like a three and a half out of five. It's not the best. It's not like Allagash White or anything, but like it's still good and drinkable. So it's above average. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to agree. Uh, I think I'm gonna give the. I was thinking I would give the same 3.5 rating as well out of five um, for this one. I th- feel like this would be like the alcohol con- uh, content or the percentage is relatively low. Mm-hmm. So with how light and refreshing it kind of is, it, like Drew said, on a summer's day, this would make a pretty good session beer. I think something you could have a few of over time with friends or something like that. So it's a good go replacement it a for, for other beers the, like Blue Moon <laughs> or like whatever. Mm-hmm. If you want something a bit higher, um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's also, (laughs) it's also pretty affordable to, um, anytime I've ever seen the the Coronado brewing beers in the grocery store or wherever you're going to go buy your beer, they're always pretty cheap. Like you can get a six pack for like seven or eight bucks and it's like higher quality, higher quality beer than, you know, some of the other session style beers or even other Hefeweizens and Blue Moon, you know, when I picked it um, up, it was, uh, it's three ninety nine, four dollars and five cents after tax, I think. So, and that's for the for the pint. how many ounces in this? Yeah, the the bomber, the big old bomber or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely that's affordable. Yeah, it's definitely a, an affordable beer to to pick up. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like outside of you know Southern California. It might be a little more when you go into Northern California, and then probably might be a little hard to find on like the East Coast. And yeah, maybe the import is like as huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, well, you know, good. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy drinking this while we uh, while we move on to our first animes of the uh, weekly pairing. So I, I want to jump right into Attack on Titan because this episode this week was tight. Um, so I, I I'm gonna ask you, what did you guys think about the fight scene? Because I thought it was awesome. So just Rolando, what did you think of it? Um, I I thought they took a a different approach to this and it was pretty cool. Um, it was more Aaron's flashbacks that we get all of this stuff. Like he has a flashback to when he was in doing like close combat training and getting his ass handed to him by Annie. And like, he kind of remembers how to use this grappling move, um, that she used on him. And she, he uses that to like effective, effectively, stop Reiner's advances and like overcome his overall bigger and greater strength than him. And it was a pretty good example of adapting on, on the fly, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. I thought, um, how they used grappling in this fight. It was cool for me because I used to practice jujitsu for a while. And so it was cool to see some of these moves and like that. Yeah, I know what that, I know how to do maybe part of that somewhat (laughs) a little, (laughs) So what'd you, what'd you think of it, Drew? 
I was uh, talking about it or thinking about it earlier, and I'm like, I didn't know coming in, you know, waking up on Saturday, and I was gonna, you know, watch Attack on Titan, watch my anime, and all that good stuff. I didn't think I was gonna be watching an MMA match. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it was it was super cool in that regard. Um, you know, we have some, and it was even drawn appropriately. You know, we had arm bars, leg bars, mm-hmm. um, a full a full headlock. You know, trying to choke him out, different things like that. Um, so that it was it was super cool in that respect. I was uh, very impressed with the accuracy in which they portrayed it, as well as uh, you know the hype of the episode. It was it was super cool. It was definitely cool. I mean, I I don't know how the the you know I guess they are titans. I was gonna say I don't know how plausible it is that he rips his arm off, but they are titans, so I guess <laughs> that does make sense. But uh, but it was it was cool to see um, it. Like normally when they try to do these grappling sort of things, it's super fantastical. You know, it's so fucking so fantastical. fantastical. <laughs> so fantastical. And and this one was a lot more realistic, like especially with more like MMA, like you said, of it, or like you can you can watch it and stuff like that. It it, it was it was cool. So um, but one of the things that, I Oh, sorry. Uh, one of the things I kind of found funny was in the uh, the middle card. They talk about like Titan martial arts, and I I kind of got a a giggle out of that. But like right after right after they said that and started doing that, like they were actually like doing legit martial arts. I'm like, all right, I'll I'll give it to them. Yeah, Uh, right after that, they were choking (laughs) each other out and craziness. Exactly right after that, um, the the eye catch, we've got Aaron like going like all gung-ho he's like i'm gonna beat the shit out of you reiner you fucking traitor <laughs> and he like gets up and he just gets decked in the face yeah and it does like a, a triple spin in the air or whatever and goes flying off yeah. and half his face is missing yeah all that, his all face is stuff. missing and he's still just screaming ah, i'm gonna kill you and it's like dude you're you're clearly losing and then that's when we get the first flashback right for mm-hmm. him getting beat by annie mm-hmm. and then and then i, I i'm Curious to see what they where they go on with uh, Mikasa against Annie. That you know, because they showed that at the end. He's how did that turn out? That would right. be a cool fight to see. I think to mm-hmm. have another flashback and see it. Hopefully they do that. But yeah, the two when, Mary uh, Sues against each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and then uh, you know Annie calling Mikasa a beast as opposed to a human, even mm-hmm. though you know kind of juxtaposition because Annie is technically like a beast or a titan, whatever you want to call it. Um, so do we? We we maybe don't know if uh, Mikasa has you know other powers or whatever it is. I, I doubt it, but that mm-hmm. was that was kind of a good juxtaposition that they talked about. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the fact of Aaron's control. Um, it was kind of cool to see that Aaron had uh, a little bit more control over his Titan. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of people even like landed on his shoulder and stuff when we're talking to him and, you know, Armin's yelling strategy to him and he was able to listen to it. Mm-hmm. So that was that was good to see, you know, all that training with Levi and the scouts and stuff has kind of paid off and he's becoming more of a viable weapon for them, mm-hmm. which is and he kind of uh, brought himself back from losing it you know he was like kind of going yeah, crazy yeah. and then they're like he's oh, still he's, back he's in still uh so. he's still driven by emotion for mm-hmm. sure and um you know that's going to be his main force for fighting but that's kind of what drives him as a character to begin with uh, anyway mm-hmm. um but it's it like you said it's good to see that you know he's able to kind of pull it back and say you know hey i need to concentrate on what's good for you know humanity and for the scouts and for uh, the 104 and all that good stuff in order to uh you know have a successful mission or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Also when, uh, the captain, I forget her name, the captain of the Hanji. That's running with them. Yeah. Hanji, jumps yeah. on his shoulder and she's like telling him, this is what you need to do. And he just kind of agrees. And then she blushes and is like, Oh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> her tight. <laughs> yeah. Getting out yeah, there. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that one, that one made me laugh. But, uh, so besides besides that fight, like were there any big things that stood out to either of you guys? I know for me, at the very end, the the giant titan broke its own ribs, the colossal titan, and it looks like it's gonna eat the two of them uh, yeah. down on the ground. So what do that, you guys think about that, that specific moment? Um, like I could see it coming because Reiner is like really trying to push Aaron over there while he's got him in a headlock, mm-hmm. um, and everyone's like. Yeah, go get him. They don't even notice it. It's like, dude, he just pushed him over to where the the Colossal Titan is, like, kind of mounted on the wall right there. Mm-hmm. Like, it was clearly a reason. And then we see Reiner yelling. They're like, oh, shit, he's calling more Titans. But he's actually just communicating with Bertolt. And so that's kind of interesting that they have this ability while in Titan form to communicate with each other by yelling. Mm-hmm. 
and know what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so getting do you back, think they're going to get uh, eaten? I don't, um, I don't no. know if it's that. I think it's just he called them to like fall, fall over and him. probably like crush Aaron and him yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Getting back to kind of the colossal titan, I wanted to talk about him a little bit. Um, we knew, you know, from the first encounter that he's able to like inject steam into the air and kind of, you know, throw off the maneuver gear, um, as well as kind of protect himself. But he fucking roasted himself like alive to keep them Mm -hmm. away. Uh, so he was kind of, you know, distracting and keeping everybody else away while Reiner and Aaron duked it out. But, uh, one thing I wanted to point out, he swallowed a mysterious scout that we don't know as well as Ymir. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he, I don't think Ymir's dead. You know, nothing points to her being dead or whatever. But who's who's this other person that, you know, he took with him? I'm I'm super curious to to see, you know, what's going on with that. Did they have a, another one within their ranks that they don't want us to know about? Was he hungry? You know, what's uh what's going on with that? I yeah. don't think they're dead either. Um because normally when Titans like whenever they like bite people, there's always the graphic like blood or or some sort of like chomp and it just looked like he tossed him in his mouth and then just kind of kept him there mm-hmm. but yeah you so like I, pop pill it's like he's he popping pills yeah exactly and just yeah. like dropped him in and then so it didn't really look like they were dead the other thing that kind of shocked me was uh uh is it connie yeah connie where he was like oh where are reinhardt and bear told they don't have their gear either and the reinhardt go <laughs> Reiner, my bad. And then the uh, and then the girl he's talking to is just like, uh, okay, right, right, dude. Like <laughs> yeah. looking at him like he's crazy. He's in denial. So, yeah, yeah, that was he. He he's gonna lose it or something. We also we also get like the kind of like pseudo flashback with Mikasa. She's like, if only I could have like chopped their heads off. But then mm-hmm. she, she sees their scared faces and she's like. I missed that opportunity, but it would have been super hard for me. So Mikasa is showing a little bit of emotion, which is which is kind of nice. Yeah, like <laughs> it shows that robot. she's not just like yeah, like like you said, a robot because she sees mm. their human form and feels like oh, like I would be murdering somebody if I cut their heads off. She still cuts their body parts off, but <laughs> she, she like would slashes, be murdering someone. She Aaron. slashes his throat, and like Reiner loses yeah. an arm. You know, pretty pretty gruesome stuff there. Pretty but. sure the slashing someone's throat still would technically kill them <laughs> if they were human. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take out your jugular. Don't 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 worry. You'll be fine. Oh okay. Don't hold that. Hold that. Oh, okay. <laughs> just just hold your throat. Yeah, real quick. <laughs> But uh, I, I really enjoyed this episode. This has one of my, been one of my favorites so far, I think. Just that fight scene and all the all the stuff going on is really cool. Um, were there, you know, what other, any things, you know, points about the show that really analy- you want to analyze or, you know, mm-hmm. any, you guys got anything else or? Um, one other point that I liked from this episode was they, during the fight, they were talking about how their blades can't cut through Reiner's armor. And mm-hmm. so Hanji mentions the fact like, oh, like in old times, like the armor they used were was full metal. But like, obviously, you can't move around briskly with with that. So there were weak points in the armor, as in like the joints and like the groin area, you know, behind the knees at the elbows in like in full medieval suits of armor so that you can actually, you know, move and not just be like this like waddling <laughs> hunk of metal. Stiff legged metal penguin. Right. And so um it's nice how they use that to apply to how to fight Reiner and then we have Mikasa like cutting the back of his knees so that he can't um fight back against Aaron's headlock as much. And he still somehow manages to push him into the into the position anime power to get mm-hmm. dropped on anime power, <laughs> anime <yeah>. power. <laughs> friendship I'm, uh, I'm i'm always impressed i i like uh you know human physiology and stuff like that that's kind of what my background is in um and so uh, this show usually stays true to that that kind of thing um you know uh, uh mikasa you know cutting you know his tendons in his legs and stuff like that um you know they always they always portray it well as well as they uh talk about it and, and um are able to you know tell the viewer kind of what's going on they always do that in a very um very good way they they're able to portray it well so i can always appreciate that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. definitely all right very cool very cool uh so it definitely was a great episode and i think the next episode will be good we've got 
uh, what looks like a little backstory on Mikasa and Armin, right? And it's going to be called The Hunters. So that'll be interesting to see. But um, the hunter move on hunters. to us. <laughs> oh, the, the serpents. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> let's move on to our to our next uh, topic, soccer request. Um, episode six. I forgot. Was it? The, was this the tale of the... You're still no, that was no, the last episode. The, that was this is what was this, this one is the uh, the rural masquerade. Oh, okay, all right. Well, you know this one. It seems like we've got uh, a film crew coming in. They're gonna they're gonna film a zombie movie in um, in the town, and uh, there seems well, it, to be huh. It's it started out as a slice of life movie, oh, right? And then it like evolved into this stupid zombie movie. Because the director <laughs> seems kind of like a crazy man. Yeah, he's all over the so place. So like a lot of directors. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. We've got um, uh, the IT, the minister of IT is kind of having the same life crisis that our uh, or not the sorry the mini- the minister of uh, what was it the janitor minister is having oh, this. Man. Yeah, same life crisis as our IT lady. So it's uh it's interesting to see how uh how she was telling her not to run away, and then she's running away, and then the other girls getting mad at her. It was it was kind of fun to see all that. Um, but I I like the episode. Uh, I think they're keeping my attention and bringing in new characters and things like that. Like the the producer guy and kind of giving everyone perspective. And he was also kind of a funny character. How they're my, one of my favorite scenes in the episode was the old guy in zombie costume sitting next to him eating lunch, and the the producer guy sitting there and he's like, "Oh, are you a zombie too?" And he's like, "Yeah, I guess so," <laughs> or whatever. And he's looking dead. So <laughs> that's that's actually pretty funny because it's like um, and all of like lower budget stuff you'll get. Stuff where um, on shoot, we there's not enough people, like they don't have enough extras or anything, so they just ask somebody. They're like on crew, like, hey, we're going to dress you up and put you in the shot. <laughs> so like that's kind of like an example of that where you're just like, put the producer in there, make him a zombie. <laughs> make him a zombie. <laughs> make everyone a zombie. <laughs> so, you know, um, we didn't see too much of uh, the, the Ron, what's it? Ranma guy, which made me happy. I'm just going to say that right now. I don't I'm, think we're going to see, I don't think we'll see him anymore. anymore. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really happy about that because he <laughs> triggered me and I'm so glad he's gone guys. Just let out a little clap for that. So, I'm pulling uh, you know, out for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll continue drinking my beer for him. <laughs> Drew, what was your, you know, your take on the, on the show? You have any favorite points or? You mentioned it a little bit before. Um, it's kind of Maki's turn to take this, you know, conflict, you know, of whatever arises. And I think that's what the theme of the show is going to continue to do. We're going to go from, you know, one person being a little bitch and running <laughs> away and, you know, doing something. And then, you know, it'll take them an episode. And then, you know, all the girls are coming. Let, we support you. You know, this will be fine. And then they'll fulfill whatever they wanted to fulfill. So first we saw it with, you know, um, our IT minister, Sanai, you know, she she had this conflict uh, with running away from Tokyo and all the Ranma and all that stuff. But she ends up resolving it and, you know, making it better. Now we're, it's Maki's turn to do that. Um, so she's, you know, she she mentions one point that I thought was very good. Um, you know, Yoshino says something about along the lines of like, it, you everybody seems to, in this industry seems to love it so much you know why can't you get back into it and she says you know because i love it too much i i'm too in love with it that you know i i can't go back to it and you know we see a bunch of things along those lines if uh you we see a little like flashback uh with uh moe the uh, other actress woman who's there uh you know she's able to put everything into acting you know even eat a, a fried cicada um in order to pro- progress her career and i thought of other lewd things that she may have done in order to get where she is when uh, she said she today. would do anything <laughs> exactly i was like exactly. ah are those the words you wanted to use there <laughs> right yeah. right but uh it, it, it just kind of shows you know that um maybe these other people are more dedicated uh than maki or you know she has standards or did she want to go back to the town um i will find more out next week i believe because she's probably going to you know get over whatever it is that she needs to get over and join the film as the, uh, the fill in and stuff like that. 
So yeah. we'll we'll see that. See that I feel like forward. she's going to fill in and then stay, obviously, in like the town and continue with them. And it's like, I'm a be better some person reason. now. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, I fulfilled my dream of being in a film or something like, you know, with my mm-hmm. with my uh, co-high and this is great. But this is, you know, I love it, but I don't want to I want to do this. this. I'm making a difference yeah. with my friends, blah, 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 sort of, you know, right thing. That's how I think it's going to go. But <laughs> and so Cause that's um, how the other one went. Building off of what you're talking about there, Drew, um, uh, what I saw from this is there is like this kind of theme, this episode of finding and also not even just this episode, but like kind of a revolving theme. It's like finding what you love to do and doing it. So we see the producer, the same one that ends up having to be a zombie. Um, <laughs> he has this conversation with Yoshino and She's like, wow, it seems like a pretty stressful job, like, but like, it's pretty amazing what you do. He's like, yeah, despite how stressful, like all of this work is like, I love doing it. And like, I, that's why I keep doing it because it's something I love doing. And that's kind of like what drives you to do what you do. And so we, we've, we come to Maki and she has this issue with her acting And Drew, you kind of mentioned it. She's got, she like, she says like she, she loves it so much that she can't keep doing it. And there's the whole like politics and bullshit behind the entertainment industry that like they kind of try and, you know, dip their foot into, um, in where like you see Moe, her, her co-high, um, eats, a fried cicada on a variety show and that's kind of what causes her big break in the entertainment industry <laughs> Got and, it. and it's like well like maki's looking at this like what like why would i have to do something so like not even related to acting yeah. or like my actual merit as an actor in order to mm-hmm. get ahead and so she's kind of like well i love the art so much that i don't want to do it anymore because it's kind There's of all this against her. Yeah, it's like against her values. And so... Well, she she sees it kind of in its purest form. And, and we see it when she's younger. And I think it flashes back to a like a school play or something along that. And you can see her pure like ecstasy and excitement of being able to perform, perform in front of her friends and family and stuff like that. But we then see, you know, moving forward when she's on that variety show, she's like... You, she doesn't say anything when she's about to eat the bug and, you know, Moe eats, ends up eating the bug or whatever it happens to be. But um, you can see it on her face. She's not as ec- ecstatic and excited about that. She's kind of selling herself short in order to move ahead. And she doesn't want to do that. She she wants to, you know, prove herself with her talent as opposed to doing these gimmick sort of things that are going to get her right. ahead. But like you said, you know, unfortunately, with the entertainment industry and stuff like that, it's very corrupt or whatever you want to call it. And it's it's hard to get ahead with uh you know pure talent alone unless you get really lucky and you know in her case that that didn't happen right do whatever they want basically (laughs) and and going on with like what what moe did like yeah like she she ate this fried cicada like i don't know why you'd want to do that but uh (laughs) she she does this and they bring it up in the conversation between maki and sanai and she's like well, yeah, she does this and it kind of I guess it shows her passion for for it. Like this despite whether it has anything to do with her acting ability or not, she did get her break from it and she's willing to do so many different things because she loves acting and she wants to do it. And that's why Sanaya kind of like talks to Maki after Maki's like, "Yeah, like, you know, I I really love acting and Like, I don't want to go through any of this bullshit, so I'm just going to walk away from it. And that just triggers her. She's just like, you were you are so passionate about this and you passionately pursued it and you're just going to walk away from it just because of one little thing like that. Well, I mean, it's not one little thing, but, you know, like she's walking away from something she's passionate about and it's like she's just running away. And I kind of feel like maybe Sanai sees, you know, what she was doing in that. And that's why she gets really mad at her. One thing yeah. as well is she has Definitely. issues with her family. You know, we we see the brother, you know, 
bring like kind of being like the the bridge between you know the the family and her and you know bringing her a care package and stuff like that and the mom seems to be very supportive of uh of Maki and stuff but like dad is just like you know, I don't even want to talk to her. Like, she's such an idiot. She dropped out of school. Like, why, why, why? All this, all this stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's that's another conflict that she has going on uh, internally that it makes it hard for her to want to go back to acting because she feels that her family is just going to, or in particular, her dad is just going to say, like, you're a failure. You know, why are you doing this? Get a real job sort of, sort of thing. That kind of reminded me of a girlish number. <laughs> the one voice actress that's from you know, the, the countryside and her father doesn't Mm -hmm. approve her doing voice acting. It was kind of similar sentiments. At least she's not as smug as, uh, (laughs) Chitose. No, no one is as smug as Chitose. Um, I actually, I'm also liking the, the theme within the show where it seems like Yoshino's kind of like the, you know, the middle of the group and she keeps doing all these random things that she doesn't know or, gonna like she she gets her the role and she gets super pissed at her but in the end that's probably gonna be like one of the things that you know is like a catalyst to getting her to stay in the group and like move on with her life and all that stuff and it was the same with those comments she gave to uh, was it maki yeah when she was saying like everyone puts their stamp on stuff i'm liking that theme that they have oh, no, that and then i'm waiting for oh that was to yeah okay yeah, yeah to to her um i'm waiting for when she breaks down and it's gonna be it's going to be funny. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what uh, Yoshino's conflict is going to be. Is it just, you know, the conflict of her, you know, in the first couple episodes moving to Manayama and adapting to this role of queen? Or is she going to have some sort of other existential breakdown, uh, kind of like the girls are having now, um, where she has to figure out this I, this identity and where she wants to live and where she what she wants to do in her life. Um, so that, that'll be interesting to see. Maybe towards the end of the show, maybe she has to leave the town or something like that. We might see that. But uh, for now, it's it's nice to just go through, you know, each individual girl on the council or whatever you want to call it um, <clears throat> and see, you know, what kind of issues they're going through and uh, solving them and, you know, moving forward and being a better group and stuff like that. Right. I was kind of thinking that that her work as queen might get her, you know, recognized on the internet or something like that. And that might find her, you know, some companies like, Ooh, and they, you know, maybe shoot her a job offer and she could like have the chance to go to Tokyo, which is, you know, she always wanted to work in Tokyo cause she can do anything. And then she's like, Oh, what do I do? Do I stay here with the people I love or do I go to Tokyo? Because that's what I think I'm going to love. And, you know, that's kind of what, what I was thinking might happen along, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere along the way, since this whole, like the other theme of the of the show is kind of like let's get this town recognized you know on the internet and by a bunch of people and have people show up so maybe that'll you know that's kind of what i'm thinking i don't know we'll yeah i can kind of we'll see out. any of either of what you guys said i kind of feel like this show what it hasn't in, in general been recurring this recurring theme is kind of finding the place where you belong and so like i'm sure mm-hmm. every like we've seen in everybody's kind of not mishaps, their their struggles that they're all trying to find out where they belong, um, whether it's within the town, what they're doing, and and so forth. And then on a slightly lighter note, uh, the other scene I liked in the show was when they went to go get permission to um, to film at the the grandma's uh, Rudiko's grandma's store oh, yeah, and the funny. they were like well but the, the old guy said we could film wherever and she's like no get out and then she goes inside and uh and Ririko's like well you know they might have uh the chupacabra manju and she's like oh no the worst part of our town and she goes <laughs> running outside for them uh, i was cracking up at that dude that was R- Ruri is Ruri's tight after yeah. like she she runs out she goes yes yeah, oh, yeah. she's <laughs> got the little <laughs> and she, she shows up later while they're filming and, like, there's one guy taking B-roll footage of, like, fucking trash cans or something. And then she just walks up. He's like, uh, yes, can I help you? She, she just likes to, like, oh, it's a smart reflex, single lens camera. And she just starts, like, na- like blurting out specs. And then yeah. we're just, at that moment, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are, the guy probably was thinking the same thing. Like, who the fuck? 
fuck are you? Like, <laughs> you just literally turned the corner to me alone in the in an alley shooting trash cans and started telling me what was in my hands. You're a she's little tight, strange. Yeah. <laughs> she's so she's, tight. She's funny. But yeah, so that was another one of my favorite scenes, all including the little yes with the hand motion. It was, it was pretty good, but... <laughs> Um, so yeah Good let me episode. uh let me talk about one thing before we move on um yeah, yeah. and this was kind of weird to me because usually shiori is such like an upbeat and happy character but when they try to you know get permission to film at the uh the, the quote haunted house or whatever you want to call it and she goes and you know she talks to the person who owns it they're like yeah tear that bitch down like we don't want it anymore it would, you'd actually be helping uh me but she's like in her mind she's like I don't want to, you know, to tear this down. Like it's haunted. Like what? What are you guys talking about? That was really out of character for her to to say that and you know, kind of lie to everybody and say, you know, oh, we mm-hmm. don't actually have mm-hmm. permission to tear there's this bitch down. Like, got to be some <laughs> reason behind it. Like, yeah, there's some yeah. story from the town because she loves the town and that's why she's mm-hmm, doing this. Mm-hmm. She wants everyone to. It see It might. It might come back to being like her sort of conflict, maybe in mm-hmm. the future. Like maybe she had some sort of event happen there when mm-hmm. she was younger uh, that she doesn't want to. You lose by you know burning it down or whatever mm-hmm. they're gonna do to it but uh you know we'll kind of see what happens with that i just thought it was super out of character for yeah. uh, for her to do that that's true i actually i forgot about it until you mentioned it i was like oh yeah i forgot because she was always she was looking like zoned out when they were talking about it and they're like oh can you go talk to them and she was like oh uh yeah of course and then mm-hmm. and then all the things you just said without repeating yeah them. it's also <laughs> kind of also just reiterating the fact that how just crazy some of these productions can get <laughs> like they want the guy the first of all that director he's just like super over the top and you're just like yeah we're gonna burn this house down it's like what you can't just burn someone's house down <laughs> like yeah that come house on. right there burn <laughs> it right now burn it burn it and film it right now <laughs> you gotta pay yeah. money to do that you can't just burn <laughs> someone's house down <laughs> And then and then they were talking about turning it into an empty lot and it's going to cost the town more money. Yeah. So, uh, like, he's going to screw fun? up yeah. this town and then leave and give nothing back. He's like, nope, sorry, thanks for your burned house later on. Oh, man. Well, you know, um, do, you, do either of you guys remember the name of the next episode? Is it another kind of like mythology based name? I, um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, look, I didn't at it. look. All right. Well, <laughs> next episode is sure to be, you know, full of fun and uh, some funny scenes as well. Uh, more of, uh, is it Maki? Yeah, Maki. More of her breakdown and where she goes from there. So I'm looking forward to it. But let's move on to our uh, next segment, the happy hour segment. And we'll go ahead and talk about the two shows we always talk about. So why don't, how about Drew, you start us with, I, I didn't watch it this week, but how about you start us with, you know, Arrow Manga Sensei and, you know, what you thought about it. <laughs> I didn't get to A watch good it. episode, uh, episode six, uh, Masamune Izume and the nemesis of 10 million copies. Uh, we're introduced to another harem character near the end, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Or what, at least what I think is a harem the one, character. The one that looks like Kuro <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, but anyway, we'll get we'll get back to her. But, um, you know, a couple of really funny scenes in here. Um, one was uh, Megaman or Megumi, whatever you want to call Megumi. her, getting blind, uh, blindfolded and tied up and forced or and <laughs> forced to be drawn or modeled or, you know, whatever you want to say. I'm by, pretty sure uh, that's Sagiri. the picture on Crunchy. Because when I was scrolling earlier, I was like, what is going on? Oh, no, yeah, that's the picture. She's blindfolded. Yeah, yeah blindfolded I, I post, and like bent over. I posted a picture of it. It was like an anime IRL uh, post where it was just like her like crying, being blindfolded and like Sagiri <laughs> like j- drooling under her skirt and like drawing her. <laughs> um, and so that was that was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, also, you know, before that ended up happening, uh, Masamune is talking to her and, you know, she's like being all reserved and all of a sudden he's like, I need to talk to you about something. And she goes, oh, did you find a big breasted girl, you know, with uh, cute pants, uh, <laughs> pants you that I can fucking draw? And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's what um, gets so her off, you- man. Yeah, no, dude. I know it. She, <laughs> she so fucking ridiculous. loves it. She fucking loves it. It's her favorite. Um, 
Uh, Rolando talked about it last week too. You know, we have Tomoy um, ba- kind of battling Mega Man and being like, "Did you just call you know these books that I love fucking uh, otaku trash?" <laughs> and, <laughs> and 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 you know, giving her like the demon look and stuff. And so her her plan is to get her addicted to light novels, and it does and actually end Sinister. up working. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so you know, uh, Mega Man then you know goes to uh, Sagiri, and in order to try to uh, you know bond with her and relate with her um, she's like let me borrow some of your books and uh, you know after the uh, bonded scene uh, they end up bonding uh, in another way and <laughs> <laughs> she gives she gives over the books and so they're they're kind of becoming friends and stuff like that well let's so. not forget the what happens before she gives them the books oh yes uh, elaborate if you will <laughs> so like yeah um, the, the whole condition for Sagiri to actually meet with Megumi is like, oh yeah, you know, you gotta make sure she's blindfolded and like tied up so that she can't do anything. <laughs> and uh, like they bring her into the room and just start like she starts like going crazy. She's like, Oh my gosh, like I feel like there are all these eyes all over me. And uh Well and then uh Masamune fucking calls her out on it and she's oh, yeah. like, You're just pre- you're just you're just pretending to be like this girl who like is experienced and likes lewd things. She's like, No, I've I've seen a dick before, dude. I've seen I'm a like, dick. what the fuck? <laughs> what the, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> and then like, like it just goes over the top and then like all of a sudden like Sagiri just pulls her panties down. And then she's like, she's like ah! I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I, I could I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist doing that. Like, what? Like <laughs> Everyone is this like real? everyone like she's just like shocked. Masamune's standing there like what 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 just happened? <laughs> and then Sagiri's just like, yeah, striped panties. <laughs> this this is tight. He's like, you have tight pants, too, dude. You're fucking sick. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Oh god. Anyway, uh moving forward, um, you know, he Masamuni then puts in a proposal for his uh, light novel, and uh, the person at the publishing company is like, "Yeah, this is awesome. Let's do it in a fucking year." And so we're like, "No, I can't wait a year because uh, I guess uh, Masamuni made a deal with uh, his aunt that as long as he is producing stuff in the uh, the light novel world and being a published author, him and Sagiri can you know live together." So we get a little bit of this conflict, and uh, you know who comes to the rescue. Another, none other than uh, Yamada Elf Sensei, and uh, she's like, "Hey, you can just uh, come work for my uh, publishing company." Uh, and so we get, you know, some more conflict. Um, again, the harem is developing because as they go and are going to go talk to an editor. Uh, she's like on it she's like let's go on a date we're really early and she's like posting on twitter she's like i'm on a date with uh masamune or whatever his pen name is it's like, his name i'm on a date with him it is his name that's what i thought <laughs> <laughs> i'm on a date with him and and you know she's like trying to be all smug and he's like you're a fucking sundry bitch and she's like no i'm not baka and you're like yeah you're just proving my point she's like fuck <laughs> i laughed a lot at that but scene that was really funny. That, that was that was that was such a good scene that was super dope um and then, uh, like Rolando said, we meet a, uh, a a new girl who reminds me very much of uh, Kuroneko, um, and she ends up being uh, Muramasa Sensei, which is Masamune's rival. Uh, they both write similar books, uh, but she's immensely more popular um, and things like that. And then, you know, finally we come upon this... Uh, this new objective that we have where Masamune and Muramasa are entered into this uh, five person contest where they're going to be writing light novels and competing against each other in order to uh, be published uh, in the coming year. So which a by the way, new co- it's, it's for rookie <laughs> rookie. <laughs> and authors. Yeah. Yeah. And Mur- Muramasa is like super, super published, like way more than uh, Masamune and on the level of the elf, uh, elf Yamada. So it's like, Bitch, why? How are you about to just enter this? You know, out of the blue, like she's Not to she seems like him, a total like getting into it, but her <laughs> like what? Right, right. So she 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 seems like a total bitch, but um, you know, we gotta we gotta have one of each trope in this harem. So uh, you know, welcome aboard, uh, Muramasa Sensei. You know, we we, <laughs> we welcome you. You say that, and when when they when they see her outside of the building, she's kind of looking at Masamune in a certain way, like like. I don't know, like, it kind of seemed like she knew who he was, but, like, we find out later that, like, oh, you're, like, Izumi-sensei, like, 
we're not like well she was she was uh super aggressive in the meeting that they had but then like when they met she was like super passive and like that sort of trope where it's just like uh but she kind of looked at him in a way that like kind of seemed like like she liked him yeah well i mean they they all like him i mean well i mean yeah duh that's what this whole thing is about but like it kind of seemed yeah. what, what I got from it is it kind of looked like she like she knew who he was. Probably what's going to happen is, you know, she's going to be end up being a super big fan of his books and being like, yeah. you know, I don't know why I'm more popular than you when your shit is like so much better than mine. Um, and then they're going to bang or do something. I don't know. Like but. for some reason, I thought like <laughs> from that, like I thought she knew that he was Izumi sensei and that she was inspired to write because of him but Mm -hmm. then we find out later in the meeting that she's actually been there longer so i'm like what like well maybe she's been there longer we don't actually know we're not sure exactly because she might just be an egotistical bitch like (laughs) yeah because she tells him to call her call her senpai but like yeah yeah i'm not like from what i got from a previous episode was that like she was a younger author that yeah that was like up and coming so mm-hmm. i for some reason i thought i took that to mean that she came out after him like she well, maybe after him. maybe she's referring to the senpai kohai relationship in the fact that she sells more she, than yeah, he does that, could be it. that that's pro- that's she's more, more what established because exactly because like like you're saying i think you know it's going to be like she was she was came out of nowhere and you know wanted to write because of him because of his, because books, of his yeah. inspiration exactly that's that's what i think it, that's where i think it's going for sure it's like the the elf elf inspiring masmune and masmune inspiring muramasa mm-hmm. elf is tight dude i, I love elf <laughs> elf yeah elf is <laughs> i, I like elf's characters. character um a lot like at first Hold on. What are these sirens going on? <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Buddy, they're coming for you. Buddy, um, they're coming for you. <laughs> but uh, she, her character is growing on me a lot just because at first she just seemed like some just dumb, like, lolly character. Mm. But she, she's become one of the more enjoyable characters for me in this show. Mm-hmm. I was sold on her, too, from, like, when she did the Twitter post. Like, I'm like, yeah, you are fucking tight. Like, let's go. <laughs> let's ship it. Ship it, boys. <laughs> I, I liked her when she was uh, shooting suction cup arrows at his door, and they kept yeah. hitting him in the face. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, you're pretty funny. I, I'm cool with you. You're, you I eat. <laughs> <So> <laughs> seems like I missed out on a pretty good episode this week. but uh, Yeah, you'll have to watch yeah, it. Was, I'm going to have to watch dumb. it after, after we're done here today. But, um... You know, so uh, I, I think. Uh, do you guys think that this this is holding you know entertainment value? I definitely think so. Um, is it getting better or kind of staying the same for you guys? What do you think? It's like staying the same. It's getting for me. better yeah. for getting for better. me. It's getting better because we're getting you know new new things. We're adding new girls. Um, I don't know. It might just be me, and I like the little sister genre. But you know, we're how, how we're, does it it's stand not, up to, or an emo. <laughs> I mean, it's better than Ori. It's better. But that's, <laughs> well, that's, okay. that's not hard. That's not hard. <laughs> it's, not hard. it's not hard to do. But like, as much as I gripe about Ori emo, it was the the last episodes of Ori emo that I had issue with, um, mm-hmm. and just how it ended. Like the rest of it, I thought was good, and like I wouldn't have well, watched it till the end, <laughs> um, if if I didn't like what I was seeing for the first um, for the first season at least, you know. Yeah. Right. The problem with Ori Emo too, and correct me if I'm wrong, is there is a um, like a visual novel aspect to it, whereas there's multiple routes and stuff like that. And for the TV show, they chose the you know the true little sister route. Mm-hmm. But you know there are other routes in Ori Emo that that are that are better and stuff like that. It's just what they chose for TV that was you know. Sub-optimal. That's how the light novel uh, ended, though. <laughs> Yeah, that is how the light novel ended exactly. But so there, yeah. there, there are other options. Um, you know, we'll see kind of with this one. You know what what happens. Hopefully, you know, it's I mean, Sigi- Sigiri is already better than uh, Kirino for me, um, and they're not related, which we keep yeah. talking about. But, <laughs> Makes a difference. Um, yeah. So, so we'll see. I I definitely enjoy it. I'm you know I'm sold on it. It's uh, it's one of the better shows that I'm watching this season. So I uh, I definitely like it. You know, let's move on to our to our next uh, the next show. Um, Drew, did you you didn't catch up right for uh, Sakurada Reset? 
No, and uh, I'm not gonna lie; it doesn't sound interesting to me mm. from what <laughs> from what you guys are saying. It's just I I'm kind of over like that kind of genre. I don't I don't know. It's it it seems convoluted and boring and annoying to <laughs> me. <laughs> well, it's Fair definitely enough. not Fair boring, enough. but I I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I do like the mystery genre. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I like I like mystery genre to an extent, but it's just like when it's 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 mystery because it's convoluted. That's where it loses me. It's just like you're just adding all these complex things to be complex. It's not it's not entertaining or intelligent or fun for me. Well, I mean, um, for, to a point, go. to a point, that's true. But this show is is a bit more than what we were talking about in the first couple episodes of this podcast. Um, there, there's a bit more to it, and I, I do think that the past, um, the past two episodes at least have shown a little bit more than, um, than it just being being convoluted. I, I'll, I'll hold my, you know, full judgments for the end. If you say like the ending was like, oh my god, like this is Steins Gate esque or like Death <laughs> no, Note esque. No, it's not. It's know. not gonna be like Stein Gate's, Steins Gate or or Death Note. But it's for sure, at least in terms of the mystery genre, it's probably like, you know, if not a little below on par with like Ungo or, um, what's it? Some, uh, what was everyone? Something's Bones. I forgot what. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, I know. Yeah. Beautiful Bones. Yeah. yeah, that one. Is that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I was I was thinking of. It reminds me kind of that one in a way. Not like in. And I didn't really. Content, I didn't really like but, that anime either. Oh but. well, now it makes more sense. <laughs> well, then it's just not. It's just not your cup of tea. It's not your style. Yeah. 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 I, I I like I like mystery anime, but it, it's got to be like there's got to be like a big twist or something, you know, that's like mm-hmm. smacks you in the face. The main says, character like, dies. This, or something. this is tight. <laughs> not even necessarily that, but just like you know. A, a cool twist or a cool concept. So, whereas this is just like, I can reset time. Cool. So, so you I, I want something like Shutter Shelter Island or whatever? Shutter. Shut I up. do. I do like Shutter Island. Shutter that was Island a cool side. movie. That was dope. But <laughs> anyway, so let's let's go ahead and let's talk about Sakurada reset here in the interest of time. So we cut. We we open up with uh, K on the train and he. Some random dude walks up to him, which my first thought, honestly, was stranger danger. Don't let him sit there, bro. Yeah, like, but what the um, fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, the he was like, is empty. Hey. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, can I sit next to you? And it's like, no, dude, sit somewhere else, dude. Fucking, I, I don't want your candy. Like that's immediately what I thought. But oops. Well, his phone. Oh yeah, well he wants to give him his phone. He's like, oh, the phone's for you. And he's like, okay, uh, sure. And he hands it to him, and he's like, oh, pick up the phone, please. And then this. <laughs> lady on the other phone's like i'm a witch go to this town and he's like okay and he goes there it's like what the fuck? well actually and she's so kind of like don't go to the town true. and that's kind but of the way that's psychology. kind of the way you tell a kid to not or to actually do something you tell him not to do it yeah exactly it's like don't eat this candy Ooh, they said don't do it i'm gonna eat this candy and, and you guys aren't saying this is convoluted like this sounds pretty fucking convoluted to me like, it was, was, was kind of like a little back it was kind of like a little backstory into how he got into the town <clears throat> and introducing like someone that they talk to later in the episode. Um, so, uh, I don't, what, what, I don't know. Do you have anything like really big you want to talk about right away, Rolando? I'll let you, you go ahead and start. Cause there's a few things I, I think I want to talk about. So, um, hold on. Let me, let me take a look at what I wrote down for this. Um, yeah. So, the main thing that I want to talk about is so yeah, there's this old dude who is an a, a original founding member of mm-hmm. the bureau of the bureau in Sakurada that governs the the powers right, and uh, he gets his power sealed by someone we find out later is Haruki and Kei's kohai from I'm guessing middle school, mm-hmm. um, I think and. So. And she she seals this guy's power to you know Be look a at villain. a picture yeah. and uh, go back and relive that memory kind of. But mm-hmm. it's it's more of like he sees the picture, he can go to the spot where the picture was taken, rip it up, and then relive that moment for like Excuse ten me. minutes or something like that. Right. Yeah. And so. While while Kay is talking to this guy and like looking through his album of pictures, he finds a picture of Soma, and she's holding something to what she he thinks is like is that the MacGuffin? And um, is it Soma? Yeah, it's Soma. Okay. 
I wasn't sure who it was because the face was obscured. Well, the hairstyle that's, was that's the at same. Least, I wrote down it was Soma. Oh, okay. Because I'm pretty sure what he said was like, I'm pretty sure he said it like, wait, is that Soma with the MacGuffin? I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, I'm going to have to go back and look. Yeah. And uh, and so clearly now his, in, his motives are like, I want to get this guy's power back so that I can go with him to relive this memory and talk to mm-hmm. her. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Find out he, what this MacGuffin really is. He was like, how do I reward you? And he's like, just let me use your, basically let me use your power. And I was like, yeah, he's definitely going to go into that, into that picture. But how old is yeah. that picture is what I want to know. You know, cause what I was uh, kind of thinking, cause yeah. I didn't see that thing with Soma or whatever. I was thinking, cause he's one of the founding members and so is this witch lady or whatever. Could it be her with the MacGuffin? So, cause I didn't see her face in the Soma comment. That's why I want to go back and look. Cause that's the theory I had in my head going up till, till right now. <laughs> I think it's the. I think it, I think he mentioned Soma. Yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm, have to check. That might be something I'm misremembering, but that's what I wrote down. So right. I'm, it's either I'm assuming that it's that it's Soma or <laughs> it looked a lot like, like her. I'm not it. gonna lie. Yeah, because like it did look a lot like her. Like I just couldn't see the face, so I was like, "Who is that?" And then that you know all those sorts of things popped into my head. And um, but the uh, it's interesting. But yeah, there there's that, and then they go back into talking about a, like another thought experiment, like mm-hmm. the Swamp Man. So like the Swamp Man thought experiment, basically it's a man gets struck by lightning by a swamp, he dies, but at the same time, another strike of lightning hits a swamp and creates a new life, which is the the dude that died. It's it's another dude that has the same appearance and his same personality. And so, like, he doesn't think he died, like, the guy that got hit by lightning, because he has the same personality and appearance, but he's, like, actually this new life that was created, and all the people he knows are like, yeah, no, this is the guy, like, so it's this thought experiment, like, did someone really die, you know, kind of like the, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound thing, you know, like, yes, technically something happens, but... Like, in the perspective of everyone else, like, nothing happened, right? Like, n- he didn't really die, even though in reality he did. So, mm-hmm. it was kind of like a thing they're leading into. Like, it kind of, I think, relates to Haruki's power. Because you know how she resets, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she, she resets, and then nobody remembers anything except for K. Right. And he uses his power to help. And Soma, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like to help remember stuff. So like I kind of mm-hmm. feel like this is something that's like being put in right now to be like, hey, like there's some sort of meaning to this. Like Haruki's power, like, yes, they're going back and like, I guess, resetting matter or whatever, like however they explained it. But she um, there's still meaning behind like all of these resets and like everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. And it would kind of, it kind of explains. So if that is Soma in the picture and it's a really old picture, she's still, you know, looking young or whatever. And then, cause you also mentioned the guy on the train is the same guy that's keeping the witch locked up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he looks exactly the same. And it's been what? I don't know, 12 years years or something. Oh, it's been four four years. years. I thought he was like eight on the train and now he's like 19 at, at the beginning, at the beginning of the, of the episode, it said four years earlier. Oh, man, I need to pay attention to this shit. <laughs> Fucking Christ. I was all thinking it was... Never mind. Forget what I said then. Four years ain't that long. Forget me. How, how old is he? He looks so tiny on that train. No one grows up that much in four years. Anyways, just... I think say. I think he's supposed to be like 12 in that, and he's mm-hmm. like 16 or something now. Guess, That's what yeah. I'm assuming. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Ignore me. Ignore <laughs> my, non, my non-ability to read. So Yeah, I will. <laughs> you know what? Screw you. What do you, what do you think, think about... Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> you, <Okay>. you go. <laughs> um, what, what did you think about um, this, their Kohai, who uh, by the name, her name is Oka Eri, mm-hmm. which, um, haha, play on words, Oka Eri. Um, <laughs> I just thought that was pretty funny, but like, she's the, yeah, okay, the girl so that seals the power. It sounded familiar. Yeah, she's <laughs> the one who seals the power. I was, okay, oh, so I thought there was something about when he said her name, I was like, that sounds really familiar. <laughs> okay, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Maybe maybe if I spoke Japanese, I would have picked okay. up on that. Um, 
She's she's kind of crazy. I I feel like there's more to her her motives than just oh I want to do whatever you hate because it it seems like it has to be related. I feel like it has to be related to the bureau somehow and the witch because the mm-hmm. witch is gonna die and she's trying to like seal these powers of other people who are like you know old bureau members and it just seems like somebody in the bureau or somewhere is trying to hide something and they're using her ability to seal like him who can go back and Haruki's reset ability you know like powerful right. time abilities like so that's kind of where I'm at I'm not exactly sure who or what they're trying to do with it but does that you know does that make sense yeah I think technically Haruki's ability kind of um interferes matter, with but... the witch's ability because mm. she can touch someone and see their future mm-hmm. to which she mostly uses it on herself to excuse me pass on information to the bureau and like basically like tell them like hey this is what's going to happen in the future mm-hmm. can we prevent this or not right and obviously if someone resets and they prevented something then that kind of fuck something up but at the same time they have been using it to their own benefit by having yeah. them in the um what was service, the club club? Club. service club service club service club which to me it it just sounds kind of dirty but <laughs> i'm thinking like well, milk you're snake, thinking like the of. service industry <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i'm just thinking like oh milk snake service club wink wink <laughs> you know sort of it just sounds kind of dirty i know that's not how they intend it but i just keep every time i see it i'm like oh god Oh God. <laughs> so, um, c- continue. Sorry. <laughs> what were but you yeah, saying? it's pretty interesting that, uh, she comes up and kind of threatens Kay and it's just like, yeah, I'm going to take Haruki's reset ability. And like, as soon as that happens, like Haruki comes out and as she's running up to them, he's like Haruki reset. Yeah. Cause it's like, that's, that's a huge threat. And that mm-hmm. that totally fucks with whatever K is trying to do with his self righteous stuff, which right. and she, she calls, calls him, a, him hypocrite. a hypocrite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I thought perfectly described him um, within the first two episodes. I'm like, he's talking about this hypocrite thing. Like that's exactly what mm-hmm. he is. He's describing also himself. Some, something bad's gonna happen because the the witch lady is like, Oh, I'm sorry. And he's like, Oh, I don't regret coming here. And she's like, oh, I'm talking about something else. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then they just leave. And then right after that, he starts talking to, um, his Kohai. And then, you know, the whole, we hear all that bit about threatening to take his, take her power and all that. Um, I was going to mention that conversation, the witch and Haruki had, but I don't know how, you know, like it was just another kind of like, Oh, well, if he was a rock, you know, sort of, so did yeah. you, it, it reminded me of the Swamp Man thought experiment, but it also just kind of... I think that was like just there was just, for yeah. um, to show that Haruki isn't just, like, attached to him just because mm-hmm. she was, like, told to be attached to him or something. Yeah, that she's kind of falling for him, not really, but sort of in, But, like, she has actual emotions. Yeah, and she's not just an android. Right. Like the first episode was talking Mm -hmm. about robotics and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, it's, it's kind of getting crazy. (laughs) It's better. I liked it better than last episode. It's not as crazy as a, do you remember, um, the perfect, uh, um, perfect insider, The perfect insider. It's not, that one is a mind fuck like all the time though. It's like, what's what? (laughs) That's the, this one is more laid back. (laughs) That's the one with the, the daughter and the mom. Right. And then Mm -hmm. they go in the virtual world and talk to her. Yeah. That one is like, what? (laughs) That one was crazy. It is more laid back than that, but it's still kind of, you know, mind fucky, but, um, you know, so I think that's all we got here today though, uh, for anime on draft. Uh, do you guys have any, you know, notes about the, some of the other animes you're watching? Any, any quick things? Um, I know we haven't really been talking about our other animes too um, much. So, Rainai Bokun was okay. Um, it was the fan service episode. They went to the beach. So uh, if you're looking for boobies in uh, bikinis, <laughs> that's uh, anime that's right up your alley. <laughs> anime um, they they gave us they gave us a little bit of more backstory on like the the families um, surrounding the girls. Um, 
and you know different powers you know swords and shields and then the uh the pink haired girl is you know an off branch family convoluted you know blah 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 whatever um the the main point though is the penguin came back and tried to get uh aqua the uh the little sister and was you know trying to get her swimsuit off and uh you know they prevented that so you know thank 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 god for small miracles um (laughs) but yeah it was it was a decent episode the Fan penguin's the best, for sure. Just saying. <laughs> best character. Fucking weird ass penguin. Like what? Yeah, he, so I, I he, he's it. like great he's, coon, dude. Fucking... <laughs> he's, he's got his wife. He pisses me off. He fucking pisses me off. <laughs> Um, but it, it was, you know, it's super, super good fan service the episode if you're if you're about that. Right um, on, right on. So but, Rolando, do you have anything, you know, about um, the shows you've been watching? Uh first I'll talk about um there was this one show I watched. Which is like, let me look at, let me look at the exact name of this show. It's, it's a, <laughs> hold on. It's, it's, it's not, I, it's hard to remember. Oh, Buso Shoujo Machiavellianism. And, uh, mm, it's a, it's, it's a show about like this, this school that used to be an all girls school, but like they became co-ed and, um, like the, the dudes that came in ended up scaring the the girls and so like they created this like council of girls that like had swords and like could beat the shit out of these dudes to like put them into place and so like this oh so high school dxd yeah well it it, well it it turns it turns into like this thing where like they end up abusing their powers and like they send a bunch of delinquents to this school so that they can be rehabilitated quote unquote um, oh, so prison school. Yeah, like prison school. <laughs> but um, th- this is like this is like a super absurd, t- absurd show just over the top. And it's kind of like absurd to the fact that kind of like Keijo, but not as over the top as Keijo oh, is hitting people with boobs. No, but <laughs> that's an that's an Olympic sport. Boys. Yeah, it's an Olympic <laughs> sport. But Shut the hell up. Um, it's been entertaining to like just so far just from how absurd it is it's not like it's a show that i watch when i just want to shut my brain off you know <laughs> um but uh well, like he note. um alec you're also watching akashic records and like the last yeah, episode was pretty good and i know we talked mm-hmm. about it a bit earlier this week yeah it was it was definitely it was a fun episode to watch and kind of they did the whole switch which was obvious from the beginning for the watcher. Um, they 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 switch places with yeah. the with the short girl and the I can't remember their names, but the his pre his old mage corp friends or whatever yeah. mage corp friends, and uh, and they do the switch and it's obvious from the beginning and and because the the queen was under duress basically from a cursed necklace and so I think you know shit's gonna hit the fan with something. Ah, I always say that though. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was a good it was a good episode. I liked what they yeah. did, like despite the fact that I was like, oh yeah, it's totally obvious that they switch yeah. places and that this is yeah. like a ploy to trick the the bodyguard knights dudes. <clears throat> the I gotta ask, did they find out what the Akashic no. re- record is yet? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. They're gonna last. I'm gonna ask every week. Last episode. Every week till till we figure. We're it out. We're not even gonna find out. Last, <laughs> last episode. episode. <laughs> no, they're, they're gonna they're gonna say at the like last episode be like oh you want to know and then it's gonna cut yeah you're right <laughs> the I the of the two mage corp people the little the chick the girl is really funny I like how she's always like oh I came up with a plan I'll charge them from the front and then you charge them from the front and then you also charge them from the front <laughs> yeah, that's and then funny. that's our plan and it's like oh I, I'm glad to see that that you're as dumb as ever <laughs> or whatever he said yeah. so was, she's she's pretty funny um but let's see i i you know i've watched the same shows um i sword oratory has taken a cool turn it's kind of dark there's like rivalries between gods and stuff like that and one of the gods is creating mayhem with these plants plant monsters that are coming out and and now we we've got a Somebody uh, who seems to know a lot about um, Ice's past, she's calling her Arya, and then she heard the name, and you know her eyes got all big, and she freaked out. And this this woman who's attacking her is really strong. 
Um, so, and, and then it really shocked ice. So she, she's going all crazy trying to defeat a floor boss on her, on her own. And, and she's just like freaking out, not eating. And so I, I it, it's definitely taking a cool turn trying, with like the backstory of ice. I haven't seen bell or uh, Hestia. I would like to see them at least one more time and have bell like kick some ass or something. That would be cool. But and let's be, honest, I don't know. You want to see Hestia. Happen. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I want to see blue ribbons. But. Well, I have Hestia sitting on my desk staring at me every day, so that's uh, uh, that's good enough well, for me. Well, we can't all be so lucky, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have the Nendroid? I have the Nendroid as well as a figure of her selling apples. Oh, <laughs> with the crate? <laughs> yeah, it's like the figure. The figure makes no sense, but it's it's Hestia so, you know. <laughs> taking on side jobs because they're poor. That's why. Right, right, <laughs> right. Big few other side jobs. Yeah, <laughs> a couple others. All right, well, you know. I'll do anything to make a break in this industry. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. On that note, let's go ahead and uh, let's. I'm going to wrap this up. You know, that's all we have today for uh, Anime on Draft episode seven. We've made it seven whole episodes. Lucky that's cool. number seven. Yeah, lucky number seven. And we've got a decent beer on lucky number seven. Um, just want to thank everybody for watching, you know, so far. We've uh, really appreciated your support and giving us views. Um, if you want to check us out some more, uh, be sure to check out our WordPress at anime.wordpress.com or animeondraft.wordpress.com. I'll get it right. Anime you at WordPress. Con- <laughs> yeah, anime <laughs> at WordPress. That's not us. Anime <laughs> on draft dot wordpress.com you can contact us there give us suggestions or feedback uh we also had rolando kindly introduced a blogging feature so he already put down one blog for sayakano season two um and then drew and i might partake in that at some point as well so uh, you can check out some of the other animes that we're watching that we might not mention here uh and you know leave comments your feedback about what you thought about the episode we talk about or what we mentioned in that blog um and then you can get links to the soundcloud the youtube and the itunes uh from from the wordpress so definitely check that out you know and thanks Mm. for listening and going on with what you said, um, that's probably where I'll cover Saikano for the rest of the season. Not much to talk about in the podcast itself. I'm thinking about using the same for Berserk, so I might yeah. I might go ahead and do that soon. Good idea. Um, I might do a, a segment on old anime that I'm watching, so if there's anything that's interesting that I go through in my backlog, I'll uh, throw that up there for you guys. Definitely. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, thanks again for listening, guys. And uh, this is us signing out. See you next time.